This lesson describes the process of using a message box to ask a user a question. There are several parts involved in this. First of all, displaying different buttons on the message box. Secondly, capturing the result of the one the user's clicked. And then finally, checking what the result was so that we can perform different actions based on the user's response. This first part of the lesson simply deals with displaying different buttons on a message box. Let's start by opening up Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then head into the VB editor using the developer tab and then insert a new module. Now let's create a new subroutine called choosing different buttons or something shorter than that if you prefer to do less typing. Then we'll use a message box to ask the user a simple question so we can use the message box function and then set the prompt to be a basic question. Let's say something like, would you like tea? I suppose technically there are indeed two answers to that question, although of course there's only one correct one, it's always yes. But I would like to provide the user with the option to click either yes or no. To do that, I can type in a comma to move on to the button's parameter, and then the list of options allows me to select different buttons for the message box. In this case, I'm going to use the one called VB Yes No, which, as the name suggests, provides yes and no buttons. You can see the full list of button combinations in the written part of this part of the lesson below the video. If we accept VB yes no, we can then run the subroutine by pressing F5 and indeed our message box appears with yes and no buttons on it. Of course, it doesn't matter which one you click at this point. Nobody's going to bring you tea, unfortunately. Um, and even more importantly, we haven't captured the result of the message box yet. We'll cover that in the later part of this lesson. So click either yes or no, just to confirm that the message box can be closed down. As always, when you're passing arguments to multiple parameters, you may prefer to use named parameter to make your code more readable. Let's add a second message box, which also asks the user if they'd like a biscuit or a cookie, if you're in the States, I suppose they're equivalent. Uh, so let's break this across multiple lines using the space underscore continuation character. And then I'm going to write the name of the prompt parameter before I write my actual question. So let's say, and a biscuit. Okay, we can then type in a comma and a space underscore. And then on the next line, I can set the buttons parameter, or I can write the buttons parameter name. Again, I'll provide the user with a choice of yes and no buttons. This again makes no difference to the end user. The message box would appear in exactly the same way whether we do or don't use named arguments. But as a developer, this is much nicer to read and maintain your code. So let's run the subroutine. I'll click yes for tea and yes for a biscuit as well. In one of the earlier lessons, we learned how to display different icons on a message box using the buttons parameter. So it's worthwhile just briefly mentioning that you can combine a choice of different buttons with a symbol just by adding them together. So after the VB yes no buttons, it might be worthwhile adding the VB question symbol to the message box. So I can do that with the arithmetic plus operator. I can do the same thing for the second message box. I can say plus uh, VB question. And then if I run the subroutine again, this time the message appears both with yes and no buttons and with a question symbol. Just makes it look that a little bit more official.